countries of East Africa, Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania have politically undergone transitions from single-party rule to multi-party democracy since their independence in the early 60s. Tanzania introduced multi-party democracy in the 80s, while Kenya only embraced multi-party democracy in the early 90s. It's a memorable occasion. Uganda, on the other hand, has had its share of coups and counter-coups and military dictatorships. However, relative peace and development has been witnessed in the last 20 years. Whereas multi-party democracy is gaining root, there are still worrying concerns in the areas of governance, respect for human rights and the rule of law. For example, the unprecedented scale of post-election violence witnessed in Kenya following the 2007 disputed presidential election was a testimony to the hurdles that impede the nurturing of true democracy and good governance in the region. Well, I think East Africa has gone through its own process of, of democratization, starting with just single party states in all these countries, moving towards a multi party system, which doesn't necessarily bring democracy, but is the first step to allowing a variety of views to come out. But that doesn't necessarily mean that one can sit back and relax. I think that there's clearly more work to be done, and there's always the chance within any democracy that if there aren't citizens groups that are vigilant that democracy will backslide and that you will see uh, 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 closing of space. Governments in the region have invariably failed in the areas of governance and protection of human rights. Key among these includes access to justice, failure to uphold constitutional rights to sections of the citizenry, especially marginalized and vulnerable groups in the society, suppression of the media, restrictions on the freedom of assembly, brutality and extrajudicial killings. These undermine the existence of an open and democratic society. OSEA works in East Africa to promote democratic participation, to promote human rights, to promote the rule of law. Essentially our belief is that there are organizations and individuals within East Africa who are able to transform the society and our mission is to help them do that. In Kenya, members of the Somali community have to undergo rigorous vetting exercises in order to acquire national identity cards, an exercise that is discriminatory against the Kenyan Somalis just because they inhabit a region that borders the Republic of Somalia. Open Society has been supporting Truth Be Told in Northern Kenya addressing issues of the Somalis and their citizenship and it has been supporting the Center for Minority Rights Development in their quest for, for determining the citizenship of the Nubian people. The Nubian community are descendants of Sudanese soldiers who served in the King's African Rifles during World War I and II. After the war, they were settled in Kibera area on the outskirts of Nairobi and other urban centers in the country. However, their constitutional rights as citizens of Kenya has been a contentious issue since independence. The Center for Minority Rights, Semiride, which is supported by Open Society Initiative of East Africa, has been lobbying and advocating for the rights of the Nubian community. Open Society came to fund the Nubian case, of the Nubian case, which, uh, which was taken before the African Commission on Human and People's Rights, uh, alleging violations of the rights of the Nubian community to land and to citizenship here in Kenya. It is thanks to Semiride and um, uh, Open Society people, the issue of uh, the ID card is now a matter of course. It's virtually a matter of, for the Nubians, it's a matter of walking in, walking out. and. Uh, has made a lot of people to stop and to take a good look at, at the issue of uh, marginalization. Minority communities are not the only marginalized groups. People living with HIV and AIDS, women, children and even prisoners make the growing list of the marginalized. 
It is now apparent that people living with HIV and AIDS, the affected and those at risk of infection need access to justice and legal services. Open Society supports organizations like Christian Health Association of Kenya, CHAC, to offer legal services within their existing health programs. As people are being laid off from their places of work, once the employers find that they are HIV positive, uh, that's one of the violations that people encounter. The other violation is you have women who have been dispossessed and disinherited by their relatives, especially upon the death of their husbands. If the husband passes on and he probably has left a widow, then the families will actually gang up and throw out these, these women and they have nowhere else to go. And on top of that, they are sick. <laughs> kwa sababu kwanza nilikuwa stigmatized me as myself self stigmatization na siko najua rights zangu kama pipu, kama mtu ambaye anaishi na virusi na kwa sababu tangu siku hiyo sasa nimekuwa mtu kama wale wengine na hakuna haki yangu inaweza chukuliwa na mtu juu na In 2007 Osiea launched a publication ensuring justice for vulnerable communities in Kenya, in which it makes recommendations to the government and other stakeholders on strategies that would lead to realization of rights for the vulnerable groups, specifically in regard to access to legal services. One estimate we heard was that Kenya is home to just about 5,000 lawyers who are qualified to take on cases for vulnerable groups. With such a small number, it is no wonder that lawyers charge expensive fees for their services and that the vast majority of Kenyans who are in need of justice simply go without it. Sexual violence against women and sadly defilement of children is now a rampant vice in society. Domestic violence is really, really high here in Uganda. Up to 70% women experience domestic violence. Zanzibar kuna matatizo mengi ambayo yanawakabili wanawake na watoto. We have a very big problem in countering so many leaps down there for the children and women. Governments in the region are now legislating policies and enacting laws to address this problem. Kenya has already enacted the Sexual Offenses Act 2007 and for the act to be effective all stakeholders need to understand its implications for effective implementation and enforcement. So CRU has largely taken that responsibility and it's because of the assistance we're getting from Open Society. We are able to come, train paralegals who are then able to go and network with police, they're able to go and network with the chiefs, they're able to network with other community leaders and ensure then that cases of sexual violence are addressed. Globally, Uganda has earned accolades for significantly cutting down on the HIV rate of infections. However, new infections among married couples are emerging, and this has been mainly attributed to domestic violence. When a woman is experiencing domestic violence, for instance, that means she does not have power around herself. She cannot make decisions. She cannot really negotiate for many things, including safe sex, because the man has the upper hand in all this. That means this puts the woman at great risk. The Center for Domestic Violence Prevention, CEDOVIP, is lobbying for clear policies and strategies to address the obvious link between domestic violence and HIV and AIDS. Zanzibar has moved at a much slower pace in the promotion and protection of women's and other human rights as compared to mainland Tanzania. Here, young girls are married off at an early age, divorce rates are high, domestic violence is rampant and trafficking of women and children for labour and sexual exploitation is on the increase. With support from Open Society, the Zanzibar Federation of Women Lawyers, Zafela, has been at the forefront in lobbying for the rights and legal status of women and children in Zanzibar.
kwa taasisi za serikali pamoja na NGO nyingine ili kufanikisha kwamba swala zima la haki za wanawake na watoto zinalindwa hapa Zanzibar. Zafela, which is composed of volunteer women lawyers, conducts research, reviews existing laws and lobbies for enactment of legislation in favor of women and children's rights in this predominantly Muslim community. Open Society Institute imeweza kutu, kutupa fund na kuweza ku review laws na hiyo ni moja ya objective ya Zafela. Tumeiangalia sheria ya kadhi ni sheria ya mahakama ya kadhi ambayo mambo mengi kwa Zanzibar hasa ya wanawake yana kwenda katika mahakama hiyo. Implementation ambayo inafanyika kule mahakama ina mnyima haki mwanamke. Mwanaisha's husband of 20 years divorced her by simply making the dreaded divorce pronouncement talaka talaka talaka. Divorce, divorce, divorce. Before Zafela intervened, she was on the verge of losing her children and their matrimonial home. Shukuru kunisaidia. Nakwenda kufungua kesi ikabidi nikapata talaka yangu. Na shukuru si haba. Na mwongozo alivonipa kuwa saivi ukakai ikiwa kama ni karatasi itatoka. Itabidi atapewa karatasi ya kuzuia tupale asiuze. Lafu bas na watoto wa kama kawaida. Remand prisoners and convicts alike are a marginalized group as most of them lack legal representation and are intimidated by the complex court procedures. Open Society supports a non-governmental organization, Muslims for Human Rights, Muhuri, which runs a project that assists remandees and convicts at the Shimola Tewa prison in Mombasa to access justice. Paralegal officers who are employed by Muhuri, who are based at the prison's uh, center, uh, hold what we call legal aid clinics. These clinics are mainly to build confidence in the remands and prisoners so that when they go to court, they understand what is expected of them, they understand the laws that are governing the, the system, and they are able to uh, defend themselves or speak up in, in court. Using theater and role play, the inmates go through sessions that are similar to court scenes. Kulingana na vile watu wa muhuri wamekuja na legal advice inabidi inasaidia sana kwa sababu wanafika wanapofika mahakamani wanakuwa wanajua ni kitu gani wataelezea na ile uoga pia inawatoka inakuwa wanajua yani kile kitu utakojitetea na section gani utakojitetea and for the correctional institutions that have opened up to initiatives mounted by organizations like Muhuri, they can now see the direct benefits. Again, when it comes to human rights, observing human rights issues within the prison also, we, 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 they are there to notify us that sometimes things are not right or maybe the prisoners are not being treated well. And uh, when they bring up the, the human rights issues that are not uh, very good, we, we do take them up and try and correct them. Northern Uganda is a region that has experienced one of the longest-running civil conflicts in Africa. The rebels have committed all manner of violence and atrocities. Hundreds of thousands of people have been killed, children abducted, women and girls raped, acts that clearly border on crimes against humanity. Whereas peace initiatives are being brokered between the rebels and the government, the public and civil society organizations in Uganda want the perpetrators to face the law in accordance with the international criminal justice provisions. One of the things we will be doing is to try and advocate for passage of the ICC bill and try and ensure that um, the modular transitional justice bill that is coming before parliament is, is a bill that addresses um, uh, the critical issues that have arisen out of this conflict and moving forward that the bill Will, and the subsequent act that will come from the bill will have sufficient sanction to ensure that these sort of crimes are not committed again. In the run-up to the 2007 general elections in Kenya, an awareness campaign dubbed Vote Your Destiny Campaign or Vijana Tugutuke was mounted and managed by a group of young artists. 
Young people was a really marginalized uh, constituency as far as voter participation is concerned. So we wanted to change that voter apathy amongst young people, you know, by running a campaign that would ensure that they register to vote, that they participate in the electoral process. This campaign was supported by Open Society Initiative of East Africa using music concerts, road shows, mini workshops and highly visible celebrity role models. So I believe that the Tukutuki concerts have, have created a, a, a big hype. It's almost like it's the in thing, man, say, to have your voters card, you know? I can decide to get a voters card, I vote if like, people like Nameless can vote, I think me too I can vote. Okay, I think it's encouraging young people to become leaders. Yeah, and I think it's a good thing. And they voted in droves during the elections only to miss the opportunity to know who won the presidential election, a situation that culminated in the gruesome post-election violence. For a long time, development projects in Kenya have been designed, planned and implemented at the central government level, devoid of the participation of the people. However, that changed in 2003 when the government set a fund for development to be designed, implemented and managed at the constituency level. This is the Constituency Development Fund, otherwise known as CDF. Open society is therefore supporting civil society organizations to empower communities with the requisite capacity to effectively monitor the usage of these funds. This is a social audit project. The social audit empowers communities to demand accountability in the utilization of public funds at the community level. A manual that will guide local communities in monitoring the use of CDF funds has been developed. On the other hand, in 2007, Ugandans woke up to a chilling message from their government that a quarter of the Mabira forest would be hived off to create room for sugarcane farming by the Sugar Corporation of Uganda. The National Association of Professional Environmentalists mobilized civil society organizations, environmental professions and concerned Ugandans into a mass campaign under the banner Save Mabira Crusade, a protest that was violently quashed but a point was made. The government later withdrew the plan. The natural resources is a human right issue in the sense that this is, uh, these uh, natural resources are the ones that support uh, livelihoods. For example, land uh, supports uh, people to get food. They build on, uh, on it. And of course, food, uh, having access to food is a human right. Uh, access to shelter is a human right. And Oil, a vital commercial natural resource, has been discovered in Uganda around Lake Albert. This has naturally created excitement, but at the same time, there are fears that this oil could turn into a curse, as it has done to other African countries. To me, I'm saying that uh, the curse, the mirage, the fears and the pessimism about the oil discovery in Africa can be dealt with if we planned, if we corrected the mistakes the others have made. You know, as late come as in the whole industry, we can learn from the mistakes of others and emulate the good examples of the successful stories. Africa's history of political instability, civil wars, corruption and weak democracies is closely associated to the discovery of natural resources such as oil. In the case of Uganda, there was negligible community involvement in the drafting of the National Oil and Gas Policy, a policy that should guide the exploitation of the petroleum resource. This raised pertinent governance issues in the exploitation and management of natural resources. Africa Institute for Energy Governance, AFIEGO, with the support of OSEA, is conducting sensitization programs for the local community in the four districts of Hoima, Buliisa, Masindi and Kabale in the Bunyoro region of Uganda. To have a right to 
this very important resource which has been found. This is meant to empower the local community to demand for information about the oil extraction plan as a right, use the information for their effective participation, seek justice and to hold all actors accountable. In respect of the oil resource in Uganda, we are just looking forward to see a government that is willing to bring each and every person on board in each and every decision that it is making and it will make for the benefit of the local communities and the benefit of all Ugandans. African governments under the auspices of NEPAD initiated a self-assessment process that would critically review their performance in development and good governance. This is the African Peer Review Mechanism, APRM. In March 2007, Open Society Initiative of East Africa and the Africa Governance Monitoring and Advocacy Project, AFRIMAP, launched a critical review of the self-assessment process conducted in Kenya for the Africa Peer Review Mechanism between February 2004 and March 2006. Weaknesses identified in Kenya APRM process included poor access to information and lack of transparency, weak civil society engagement, a state-centric conceptual framework and non-inclusive follow-up structures. Recommendations were therefore made to the government to proactively engage the civil society in the implementation of the plan of action to address the challenges the country faces as identified in the APRM process. By having these kinds of reports, as I said, if, if a proper consideration of the APRM report had been done, uh, you, you'd find that, you know, in it you'd actually find that there was a warning to Kenya in terms of, you know, you have these problems in terms of your own nationhood, your, in terms of the whole question of trust and co lack of confidence um, in the different political uh, arrangements that are currently existing in Kenya. Information, Communication and Technology ICT, is a prerequisite for economic growth. But ICT can only develop in a conducive environment complete with the right policies. Open Society has therefore supported the Kenya Information and Communication Technology Action Network Kiktanet, which has been a major player in the formulation of appropriate policies for the development of the ICT sector in the country. Uh, their support has actually contributed a lot to, uh, to the work that Kicktonet uh, has been able to contribute in this country and most of it has been pre just pre providing that uh, support to uh, maintain a forum towards policy development uh, and also understanding of policy issues. The Open Society Initiative for East Africa uh, has funded us for a two-year project that actually is looking at uh, mainly supporting on freedom of information in Uganda. The sprawling informal settlement of Korogosho in Nairobi, Kenya is home to a community radio station, Koch FM. Started by a group of youth in the area, the station seeks to empower the population with a variety of educative and informative programs. <laughs> kwa vile sasa kama ni mambo ya ukabila sisi tunaona inaenda ikiisha tunatufundisha njia ya kukaa na watoto wetu vijana <coughs> wetu kama sasa wameharibika hivi vile tunaweza kuwa kusaidiana nao being a unique youth project that seeks to reach those who cannot access mainstream media open society initiative of east africa supported koch fm in the establishment of its broadcast studio in fact that was the very beginning that we were able to get the computers and also our transmitter, and especially those were the very expensive things that we really needed so that we could go on air. Francis Okello, one of the founder members of Koch FM, is now a student of television production at the Morforce Training Center, courtesy of a Reuters scholarship. Their mission was to empower the community and particularly for the youth to change their decadent lifestyle. What actually made us start Koch FM 1 we wanted to form a movement against evil forces. Some of us were a bit into crime and we later realized, okay, we conquered ourselves, just felt like it's not paying because you go back there today, 
people of my age are not very many because of the most of them died in the line of duty i mean searching f trying to fend for their families you know okello has had the opportunity to participate in the production of one of kenya's successful television programs the hatua talk show This weekly program is produced entirely by the students of Morforce Training Center. We're trying to work with the youth um, and open a way for them to actually access you know, human rights issues, talk about human rights issues, be interested about humans, human rights issues. Boys and Kenyan men are being raped. When they came on board, they not only brought a great project to the school, Hatua, which was actually developed by the students here. They helped us to upgrade the facility so that it's 100% hands-on. And that transformation is related to just an, a tremendous amount of outcomes-based production that we now do. <laughs> Walking on two features actually, one is domestic violence and one is sexual harassment. And uh, the sexual harassment piece is basically about defining sexual harassment. To create an open society, Open Society Initiative for East Africa supports a number of other grantees in East Africa as it remains true to its mission and vision of developing programs that promote an open society and consolidate democratic principles and practices. Other grantees include Uganda Human Rights Network, Hurinet, Youth Agenda, Citizens' Assembly, Sayari, Citizens' Coalition for Constitutional Change, 4Cs, Truth Be Told, Independent Medical Legal Unit, Manju Group, Coalition of Women Against Violence, COVAO, and Africa Center for Open Governance, AFRICOG.